Hello everyone. I've been playing Dragon's Dogma 2 for over 50 hours now, and I am surprised of how much I enjoy this game because I didn't think I would when I pre-ordered this game. However, I do realize that this game can be very frustrating sometimes. It's not a game for everyone, and it just doesn't guide you like other games do. You have to go find things yourself. So I want to share with you three tips that I think are big quality of life improvements. At least they have helped me enjoy this game much more and overcome those moments of frustrations like not knowing where to go or what to do and things like that. So let's start with number one and that is using the advanced on search. You really want to use this to filter the pawns to your criteria. For example, you can change to only show pawns of certain level. Now, if you're cheap like me, you can always just make sure that you're always hiring free pawns, make the maximum at your level and the minimum just one or two levels below. Or you can go ahead and you know hire higher level pawns and it tells you how much you have to pay as you increase the level then you also want to filter just by the vocation that you need every group should have a mage and if you're not one and you need one you want to just be able to see those only as well as your own preferences for gender and race but the most important filter that I use is this, the quest knowledge. Show only pawns with knowledge of priority quests. One of the most frustrating things here is probably quest, like not having a guide. And even when there is a pinpoint a location in the map, usually it's around there in the vicinity, but not where they show you the icon. So for example, when I'm set out to do a quest and I usually like to do quests in groups by geographic location. So I know I'm about to do this quest, which by the way, when you look at your quest list, if the quest has a hand next to it, it means one of your pawns knows it. And the number will tell you if it's your first higher pawn or your second higher pawn. If it's blue, then that means it's your main pawn. And let's say that I want to do one of these quests. Let's say that it's short-sighted and I don't know where the location is. So before I'm going to search for a pawn that has this quest, I'm gonna set it as priority. Once I set it as priority, I go back, I do the advanced search and I make sure the quest knowledge is checked so that every pawn that is shown to me will know how to get there, how to do this quest. And all you have to do when you're in game, just hit the go button and a little hand will show up next to their name. So you just follow them. It makes gameplay much more easier, much more simpler. It removes completely the frustration of not knowing where to go, what to do and things like that. So definitely highly recommend it. And then of course, you can also filter by their inclination. I usually only use three, kind-hearted, simple, and straightforward. Those are the three that I like to usually have. I don't like to use calm, mostly because pawns that have that inclination tend to throw away things that they pick up if it gets too heavy. And I don't like that. I do like all the pawns to keep what they collect. And simple is the inclination where they collect the most things for you. So those are the ones that I usually like. And then once you get to a higher level and you want to look for pawns that have specific weapon skills, you can also filter by those as well. You want the pawns with the most powerful skills. So you can completely just check those as well. Now this only works if you filter specifically by vocation. If you filter by vocation, then you will have the option to do that. If you don't select a vocation, then you will not be able to search by weapon skill. So just keep that in mind. So for tip number two, it's how to read the map, how to use the map to figure out if you've been to a place or not. 
this game has a lot of caves. Sometimes when you are exploring and you encounter the entrance of a cave, but you don't know if you've been there or not, and you want to figure that out. For example, I have this cave, Strangler's Cave. I can click on it. And if it shows like this, the whole thing is blank. It means I never enter. So that means I can explore this cave. If you go to another cave, let's grab one that I've been to. So let's take a look at this one. This is the Digger's Ruins. I click on it and if it actually shows me the path, it means that I've been here and I actually explore pretty much this entire area. And then it also has different levels. So I can see this is a top level. It looks like I've been there. I'm not sure if everything was explored, but I've been there. And then it has another level at the bottom that looks like I also been there as well. So that is very important because you don't want to be wasting time going into a cave and then kind of visually see if you remember if you've been here or not. You want to just open the map, click on it and see, okay, oh, I now actually never been to this cave. All right, I can enter. I can go ahead and I see if I can find anything. That is tip number two. And for tip number three, it's about the golden troll beetles. Every time you find one of these and you want to use them because the buff that they give you, the increase of 0.15 kilograms carrying weight is permanent. It is not a temporary buff. I did not know that. When I started, I was just kind of just collecting them, saving them, and I using them only when I was like a very heavy or over encumbered. Then I found out that buff is permanent on your character. So you don't want to be saving them. You want to use them and get that extra increase of weight that you carry. And also don't forget to also give it to your main pawn. Now I haven't found out a way to manually make them use them. It doesn't give me that option. I don't know if there is actually a way to give to them or they will use it automatically when they reach heavy or over encumber so i'm not too sure it doesn't look like it's possible but yeah don't save them use them and i get that additional weight lastly i just have a bonus tip and the only reason why i don't call it tip number four is because it's very specific to these particular enemies the golems when I first encountered this enemy, I found it very frustrating to defeat them, mostly because you have to hit those weak spots, otherwise you don't do damage whatsoever. So after destroying all the discs, at the end, I didn't realize that they also have another disc that is under their foot, the left foot. So I spent a long time just waiting for them to walk to raise the left foot to try to hit that disc. I ended up giving up. So then I found out that the best way to deal with them is once you destroy enough this, the one around the legs, the ones that are facing outside and the one on the back, at one point they're gonna drop on their knees. And that is the window of opportunity where you wanna go and destroy that disc that is at the bottom of the left foot. Once you destroy that one, then the rest becomes pretty easy because all other discs are going to be facing outside and not facing the ground. So just a quick tip, uh, maybe some of you already know, I didn't, but I don't know, for those who don't know, I thought I'd throw it in there as well. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I know that this game can be pretty frustrating, but that aside, I think it's still a really good game. I personally found it to be surprisingly fun. So hopefully these tips helps you out, makes you have a smoother adventure. All right, that is it. I love you all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.